Electricity did not much matter to Dr. White. He determined that any linear spreading energy could act as a conduction path for these human energy rays. And these effects could occur wirelessly through the space of several feet. What else could this be but some auric energy of high, constantly nourished potential? Such pivotal discoveries would later be advanced by Thomas Hieronymus with his discovery of L-optic energy rays, and Dr. Kilner, whose blacklight glass screens would enable him to directly view the vital emanations from any living object. Dr. Albert Abrams in San Francisco would also develop these reflex diagnosis methods to a higher degree of accuracy. Dr. White was making steady progress now in his methods of diagnosis. He standardized color emulsions whose light rays would reveal the presence of the common diseases then prevalent. Running through these color rays became routine for Dr. White, and success of diagnosis was his by these techniques alone. These methods are reproducible and await the enterprising. With his discovery of vital organic energy, came the sudden realization that illness might have a vibratory nature. If this were so, then cures might be had through specific light ray beams. These were designed to interfere with a disease condition. Dr. White was a believer in the theory of Dr. Virchow, father of the cell theory, which stated that specific germs seem to be attracted to their natural habitat of disease condition and may augment pre-existing conditions of weakness in the body of a patient. While Dr. Abrams in San Francisco was delving into the electrical means of diagnosing disease during the early 1900s, Dr. White continued to use color ray beams in his diagnosis. For Dr. White, beams of colored light were living conduits of power capable of transducting strange vitalizing energies into the physical bodies of his patients, which in many cases had lost their ability to conduct these nutritive portions of the enlivening environment. To Dr. White, these beams of color were as solid as any transmission line and were in fact the sites of many energetic interactions beyond that of color. He began now to attack the problem of effecting whole body cures for the infirm via light beams as vital conduction path. His discovery of vital energy transfer between persons was made as far back as 1876. In this effect, a patient would cause energy to be passed to a neutral subject, observing the neutral subject for signs of muscle tension or relaxation would always reveal the disease state of the patient. The character of these muscle responses would vary with the health conditions of the persons involved. He made discoveries which were corroborated later by Dr. Albert Abrams, Ruth Drown, Eamon, Hieronymus, and many others concerning the polarities of the human body. He delved into the natural polarities of solar light and of lunar light. He made a great discovery wherein even a pinpoint ray of lunar light will trigger the vagal response. 
This was both rare and sublime in demonstrating the delicately wonderful sensitivity of our organisms to the external changes of the most subtle varieties of energy. It was Dr. White's belief that disease states would alter the natural nervous energy of the body, thus rendering the muscles into a state of tension. If color beams could trigger the response themselves, might not this method also cause an interference with the disease state, thus neutralizing it through color alone? His was an attempt to cause vivifying energies to enter the body of an ill person via color beams. For Dr. White, a disease condition in an organism represented dysfunctionate vibration. His was the attempt to re-establish the proper resonance of the body in order to create a healthy condition. This view admitted of certain basic facts. First, that our organisms are absolutely awash in an energetic environment which determines our state of health or of sickness. Second, that disease conditions or vivifying conditions actually enter our bodies from the external. Third, that energies of various kinds focus into and upon certain physical organs. Fourth, that certain disease vibrations actually focus upon portions of the physical body causing lesions to occur. The sight of a disease was termed by him simply as a lesion. The energy of these lesions could be measured by the effect upon the vagal muscular response under certain light rays. Even hidden lesions could then accurately be monitored by locating these points within the body which would cause the vagal muscular response variations. Dr. White designed probes which would be passed over the body in making these determinations. Thus, progress in achieving health could be monitored as well. In a series of experiments involving the transfer of vital energy, Dr. White would use two persons. One would be a patient suffering a specific illness. This person would be seated with an attached electrode to the sternum. The neutral subject would then grasp the other terminal of this conduction line. When the physician examined this person, it was found that they would elicit the very response of the patient's disease condition when diagnosed. Here, said Dr. White, was proof that diseases both could emanate energies and could generate similar conditions in others by mere association. These occurred without germ transfer and were immediate in their effects and removal. For when the subject released the conduction line to the unhealthy patient, the vagal response became normal immediately. This simply profound demonstration may be repeated and demonstrated clearly. It proves the vibratory theory of disease transmission by conduction paths alone. That persons may experience symptom transfers became a common demonstration for Dr. White to repeatedly prove throughout his career. We may add that in our next video essay concerning